Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this RedGamingTech.com video, we're going to be discussing as well as analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up in the past 24 or so hours. Hopefully, you are having an amazing day. We have lots of news to get through in this video. I'm going to start things out with a few things for AMD, the first of which is confusion over the type of memory which Zen 4 supports. As you are likely aware, Zen 2 is the current architecture from AMD, although by the end of 2020, it will be replaced with Zen 3. On the desktop platform, it will also mark the end of the pledge AMD uh, gave us back in 2017 with the AM4 platform, that is, forwards and backwards compatibility. In other words, if you had an X370 board which you purchased back in 2017, uh, you should be able to plonk a Ryzen 4000 series processor in it. So essentially you could have had a board which lived several upgrades. You could have uh, used it with a 1700X, a 2700X, a 3900X, and we can presume it's going to be for, called a 4900X. Uh, that is with a few caveats, one of which of course is PCIe 4, probably wasn't working with your board. I say probably because there were some manufacturers which released uh, kind of beta BIOSes for their boards, but the uh, kind of final revision of the BIOSes, AMD asked the manufacturers to remove PCIe for support uh, because they felt it was a bit hinky. Uh, this was mostly down to the way the uh, lengths of the PCIe traces were laid out on the board and basically signal interference. I've covered that quite extensively extensively in the past. Anyway, the reason I'm going into kind of history is because Zen 4 is supposed to be kind of a clean slate. This, of course, will mark a new uh, platform for the desktop, which I've, called, which I've been told is going to be called AM5, and much the same on servers as well. For example, Forrest Norod, in an interview with Anantech, confirmed that Milan will be on DDR4 memory as well. Milan will, of course, be the server variant of Zen 3. And from what my understanding is, anyway, the core count for Zen 3 will be identical to what we have now. So up to 16 cores on the desktop. And a leaked slide from AMD also hints that we will see 64 cores for the server, with of SMT times 2, so up to 128 threads. We will also see substantial uh, IPC gains, but clock frequencies will be a little bit higher, but not profoundly higher, so let's say 1 to 300 megahertz. I've heard around 200 is probably about the upper limit. Okay, so for the last couple of minutes, I've given you quite the history lesson. What on earth is the confusion about then? Well, Zen 4 is rumoured to maybe not use DDR5 memory. And a lot of this rumour has started because of Shark Bay on the PTT.cc board. Uh, he's actually a pretty well-known leaker. Has said in regards to whether or not Intel... Um, sorry, whether or not AMD will have uh, DDR5 support for their future processors, they've said that this possibly is not going to happen because LP DDR5 has been removed from Tag Lake documents back in February 2020, and in addition, DDR5 was also removed slash delayed in March 2020. And this is since Red Army, which, of course they're referring to AMD there, has no intention to push DDR5 anyway. Uh, these uh, translated comments are from the retired engineer on Twitter, so thank you very much for him to uh, translate things actually accurately, rather than, of course, us needing to use Google Translate, which can be fairly accurate in many instances, but also can just be kind of completely and utterly off whack. Anyway, um, so there is a lot of debate right now whether this means, uh, with AMD, the uh, Zen 3 architecture, or whether this means Zen 4. Now, my personal opinion is that this is almost certainly DDR4 in reference to Zen 3 only. There are a few people who are claiming that AMD have confirmed Zen 5 for the um, Zen 4 platform, and that's not actually true. Instead, what has been confirmed is Zen 3 will use a DDR4. But in an interview with Anantech, and 
uh, questions regarding uh, DDR5. Forrest said, and I quote, DDR5 is a different design. It would be on a different socket. We've already said that Milan is mid-2020 platform, and we've already said that socket SP3 uh, will continue to support DDR4, which is, of course, what's used for Milan. Things I've been told do seem to imply that Zen 4 will also support DDR5. Uh, one of my sources told me that it's going to be AM5, and uh, one of the reasons that AMD are allegedly basically uh, changing platform is so that they can incorporate all of the latest technology. This also means that uh, in the future they may increase the core count. And this really does come down, of course, to competition from Intel. I'll get into that in just a second. But ultimately, in terms of the number of processor cores, at least as far as I heard, which was late last year, they had not really figured out the number of processor cores yet for their platform. Also, you need to take into consideration how long uh, AMD have been testing processors. Basically, while, of course, engineering sample silicon is important, uh, and obviously that's one of the reasons we see leaks of processors, which becomes more prevalent when uh, they start shipping out engineering samples and they start sending them to, like, OEMs, and, of course, that means companies like Dell or whomever do an oopsie and forget to disconnect the uh, system from the Internet. Although I believe in some cases, to be honest, some leaks are deliberate. Uh, because, yeah, obviously hype and excitement is definitely a good thing. As kind of a, an amusing fact, if you notice, not all the time by any stretch of the imagination, but it's not, it's not rare that a leak seems to happen from a competitor when a, another competitor <laughs> happens to release a product statement or something like that. So company A will either do a launch or announce a product and then within a couple of days company B will have a leak which uh, happens to be found on the internet. So when it comes to pre-silicon, uh, typically these things are essentially uh, being simulated um, and this can happen way before the actual physical silicon exists. Indeed, I've been told that there was actually pre-silicon testing of Milan all the way back in 2016. Obviously, once again, I'm stressing that this is not physical silicon. Instead, this is very early prototyping. And clearly, this was also most likely with features uh, missing, although I don't have all of those fine details. And that brings me back to what I was mentioning about Intel a moment ago. There was an internal roadmap which was recently leaked, although of course whether A, the internal roadmap has not changed since then, and B, whether it was fabricated to begin with. But anyway, according to this, we will see Sapphire Rapids launch next year, and in 2022 we will see Granite Rapids. And with Granite Rapids, for example, you can see that, yes, it's got DDR5 support, and also Sapphire Rapids also looks to have DDR5 support. So my personal opinion is just because of the additional memory bandwidth that DDR5 offers, and also additional density as well with the DIMMs, I believe that it makes logical sense, especially with servers. Desktops, it may be unlikely, but I think it's fairly uh, high probability. And also, I'd like to bring up one small piece of AMD news, mostly because it's kind of fun, if nothing else. And that is that Schrenker, hopefully I've pronounced that correctly, it's a German gaming laptop brand. They have actually created a new laptop, which supports AMD processors. And this is not news relating to Renault, which you may be thinking of. Uh, but no, this is a 15-inch laptop, which has a fairly decent graphics card, to put in mildly. It's got an RTX 2070 in there. But you may say, well, who cares? Another AMD laptop. What's the big deal? Well, the big deal is it's a Ryzen 9 3950X. That is correct. It is quite literally a desktop processor that they have managed to slap inside of this thing. It's a desktop processor that's running in 65 watt mode. Um, I would love to know what the battery's life uh, life is like on this. Uh, in fact, they, there is more basic models. There's actually a Ryzen 5 3600 model that you can purchase as well. But the Ryzen 9 3950X, as I mentioned a second ago, comes with an RTX 2070. 
uh, 32 gigabytes of memory. Although I will say the memory is not super fast. It's only 2666. And finally, one terabyte of uh, SSD space is an NVMe drive. And this is going to cost you around 2600 euros, which is kind of expensive. But also, this laptop is, well, no compromise. That is essentially like someone's taken a shrink ray and aimed at a laptop, uh, aimed at a desktop, and then somehow just cobbled on a, um, a screen. I mean, it's not exactly going to be light and portable, but if you do want to take it to like business meetings and kind of do some productivity work on the side, as I said, I would love to know what the battery life is for this. It's only a 1080p screen. However, it does run up to 144 hertz. It's an IPS panel. Um, so that's kind of cool. But, uh, oh, I actually made a small mistake. Excuse me. You can get variants of this with faster memory. You can get it up to 64 gigabytes of memory and at 3200 megahertz. So, yeah, kind of a lot of speed. And now, back to Intel. I feel like I'm a yo-yo at this point. But anyway, uh, this information comes to us via foreignx.com, so uh, of course credit to them. Intel have began to prep yet more Linux code for data streaming acceleration with their upcoming Sapphire Rapids platform, uh, which once again, of course, is upcoming server processors. Data streaming accelerator is definitely a feature... Uh, which is primarily aimed, of course, at the data center. And uh, there's a set of patch notes, and um, foreignx.com have compiled a rather nice uh, explanation of this. Typical hardware devices require a driver stack to translate application buffers to hardware addresses and a kernel user transition to notify the hardware of new work. What if both the translation and transition overhead could be eliminated? This is what Shared Virtual Address, SVA, and ENQCMD, Enabled Hardware, like Data Streaming Accelerator, aims to achieve. Applications, new, applications map portals into their local address space and directly submit work to them using instructions. So, but once again, basically this eliminates overhead. I'd also like to touch on some gaming rumors, um, specifically one revolving around a new Resident Evil game. Uh, this information comes to us via Aesthetic Gamer, aka Dust Golem on Twitter. Uh, they have been accurate in the past, but they were also pushing the fact that Silent Hills is being uh, kind of rekindled by Sony and uh, then Konami basically said, no, that's not happening. So, obviously, they could just be denying it, and then five minutes later, we could see an official announcement, or we got that information wrong. So, getting one thing wrong doesn't mean all things are wrong, and also, it's too early to know if that thing's wrong. Wow, that was a really clumsy statement. But anyway... Um, according to them, and once again, I would stress that they have gotten stuff right in the past, so this is why I'm giving them some uh, credibility. Uh, according to their tweet, uh, what the hell? I'll tease a bit more about the 2021 Resident Evil game, and then not talk about it deeper until Resident Evil 3 is out. The RE 2021 game started development in late 2016. By the time it releases, it'll be about four to four and a half years that have been in development. Um, but uh, it's been really in development for about three to three and a half years. Its development is similar to the original Resident Evil 3, not the remake. But I won't on expand on that, what that means, until a bit later. The announcement for it will be really soon, and it's the biggest departure the series has ever taken. To the point, a lot of people will likely be pissed off about it when it gets revealed, but they should be open-minded. Internal testing and like shows it's a high-quality game, and I'm quite excited for it. Um, I personally, I'm really hoping it's not an action-orientated game. Uh, Resident Evil 4, to me, is about the limit. Maybe Resident Evil 5 in terms of action, but I think when you get to like Resident Evil 6, it just kind of felt like it was an action game but with some of the Resident Evil characters. Like, Resident Evil 6 barely felt like uh, the Resident Evils that you're used to. Like, my personal favourite games, and uh, I'm not going to refer to, like, the new one yet, because I've not played Resident Evil 3, and it'd probably be, like, Resident Evil 1 and 2 and Code Veronica. I know that's a controversial statement, because most people 
and probably have like Resident Evil 4 up there. And I did really love Resident Evil 4. Uh, little side note, I actually bought a GameCube back in the day, uh, quite literally for Resident Evil 4. I bought the US release, so I had it imported. So I bought Resident Evil 4, Resident Evil 1 Remake, and Resident Evil 0. Um, so that was like the reason I bought a GameCube. Combine that with uh, Zelda and also Metroid Prime. I was really excited to play Metroid Prime. And I still think that's one of my favourite Nintendo games to the day. I absolutely love the music in Metroid Prime. Anyway, I'm getting way off tro- topic. Um, so yeah, I'm very curious to know what they mean by a big departure. Obviously, there's very little information there. Um I would kind of like a Resident Evil 4 remaster. I wouldn't be surprised if it does come out, especially with the new generation of consoles. I'm hearing some interesting things about Resident Evil 3. Uh, Some people are saying that it's an amazing game, much scarier than Resident Evil 2, but I've also heard some um, complaints regarding the length of the title, but I'll wait until I've played it myself to kind of judge it. Uh, I'll probably be picking it up on PC in not too distant future. Anyways, I think that's just about it for this particular video. Hopefully, you have enjoyed it. Anyways, I think that's just about it for this particular video. If you've enjoyed it, then of course, I'll leave a like on the video and also subscribe to the channel and ring the bell icon because, as we know in YouTube land, subscribing is never enough. You can also find us on social media, so go ahead and give us a follow if you so desire. And I'm also going to take an opportunity to plug our Patreon, which of course is also linked in the video description. Don't feel you have to, but if you do want to support the channel, um, then that's one way to do so. Or you can simply use our Amazon affiliate links. Uh, So if you're going to be buying, you know, whatever in this particular climate, then you can uh, use Amazon affiliate links to give us a small kickback. But before that said, have an amazing day. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.